So now that Sergeon Ratcliffe's 25% stake has been confirmed, the transfer news is heating up. There's a lot of rumours, reports and stories coming out today on the ins and the outs ahead of the January window and some suggested to be more towards the summer window. So what is the latest on transfers? What's the latest ahead of the January window? The Kimmich links, could Varane leave? Who's likely to leave? Who's not likely to leave? What's the latest on the takeover and new rules that have been incorporated? Some of which are quite interesting. What has Tenor recently said about the takeover? And then, of course, what's the injury latest? When is Martinez, Casemiro and Mount all back and ready to return? Because Mount is back in training. I will give you the latest and all this news in today's video. So please do hit that like button. And of course, do subscribe down below if you're new. We do videos every single day updating you on all the latest Manchester United news, transfer news, takeover news, updates and more. So the first story came out by Sport and sport is not a reliable source. It's just one of those Barcelona aggregator accounts that likes to get clicks and they say that Bayern Munich are willing to offer 20 million euros for Varane. Now, I actually genuinely believe that Bayern Munich are willing to offer 20 million for Varane and although sport's not a reliable source, it is a story that makes sense. However, I do think, to be honest, from what I'm hearing, Varane's not going anywhere in January. You look at the centre-back injury crisis we're having and all of this, you look at the fact that Varane is our best centre-back, that Varane is playing well, and you look at the fact that reliable sources like Romano said that Varane is happy at United, he doesn't want to leave in January. Reliable sources have said Varane is happy, he doesn't want to leave in January, despite his lack of game time. Maybe he'll leave in the summer if he stops getting game time, but he doesn't want to leave in January. The unreliable sources saying, well, Varane wants to leave in January, but we know he doesn't want to leave in January. We know that Bayern are interested in him, we know Real Madrid are interested in him, but it's unlikely that Varane will go anywhere in January, is what we know and what we're aware of. In terms of Jadon Sancho, we do know that he will leave the club in January if he gets an offer. I mean, he's not playing. Man United are basically like, yeah, please go in January. We've just got to hope he gets an offer. We know Borussia Dortmund, Juventus and a few Bundesliga clubs are interested on him, but that's most likely to be on loan. We know that Saudi Arabia would be willing to probably spend the 40 million we want for Sancho, but Sancho will not be willing to go to Saudi Arabia. I assume Sancho goes out somewhere on loan where we pay about 70% of the wages because we're mugs. And that will be the end of Sancho. Um, in terms of like other Manchester United players that are on the way out, there's actually reports that Manchester United are willing to listen to offers for Anthony, sell Anthony, which isn't surprising considering that Garnacho showed him up on the right wing in one game this season. But apparently Manchester United basically offered Real Madrid the chance to sign Anthony. Um, however, Real Madrid declined the opportunity. Shock. Shock. I mean, come on, Real Madrid buying Anthony. Look, I don't think Anthony's as bad as he's been playing at Manchester United, but... Um, yeah, it doesn't surprise me Real Madrid rejected a deal for Anthony there. And then the last stories coming in was obviously all confirmed by Romano that Casemiro is not interested or entertaining leaving in January. Despite offers and interest from Saudi Arabia, Casemiro is likely to stay put at Manchester United. Donny, Frankfurt, Donny, to, Donny van der Beek to Frankfurt is essentially done. And then, of course, Manchester United are open for offers for Martial in January because he will leave for free in the summer. So Donny is gone. Casemiro is not going anywhere. They are open to offers for Martial. Some reports are just open to offers for Lindelof, but there's an expectation that we won't get offers for Lindelof coming in. Now, this is the one story I want to get into now, because this is the one story that sort of wound me up. It's come out today by a decent Portuguese source, and this is on Fernandes. It was said Benfica are targeting Avai Fernandes. Contact has already been made with Granada to see if it's possible to break his loan in January, as well as with Man United to assess the possibility of selling him immediately or this summer. He's valued at £6 million. Now, this is what I find a bit embarrassing. I don't know what the target's going to be. It's going to be, like, embarrassing or something. £6 million for Avai Fernandes. Six million. Why do we constantly undervalue our young players? Sedanic bought a million. Six million for Alvaro Fernandez. You look at Anthony Alanga going for 15 million and being not an Forest's best player. City got for nearly 40 million for Cole Palmer. City have got 40 million for many Academy players. Chelsea even got 30 million for their left back, Lewis Hall. And you're telling me we can't get six million for you're telling me that we'll get no more than six million for Alvaro Fernandez. I'm not saying he's a crazy expensive player, but 15 million. 15 million, please. Good young player, 15 million. My last year was about 50 million, 15 million. That's, we're valuing our young players too cheap. And I know that we're desperate to sell and bring in money to balance FFP, which is why I think I'm doing this, why I think Man United are doing this. But we're really undervaluing young players. Yes, his loan spell hasn't been the best at Granada, but Granada's captain was a left back. So I don't know what we're thinking, let him go to Granada on loan. It was obviously wasn't going to be first choice and get loads and loads of minutes. But he's a good player. He could come through at United. Maybe we could have kept him around the season instead of bringing in Regilon. But for, um, 
Tenong was very strict with Fernandez and said, you've got to leave. It was said by Samuel Arcus that United are already consulting relevant figures at Ineos over significant changes in the next month. And with Ineos coming in, it said that United can't sign the sell players without Ineos' permission. So maybe Ineos people step in and say, look, six million for this young guy. Let's have a look. Let's have an analysis about it. And maybe it won't happen. Now, talking of deals that won't happen, but we've been linked to is Joshua Kimmich. He's joined the list of clubs uh, Manchester United are interested in. Um, sorry, he's joined Manchester United has joined the list of clubs that are interested in Kimmich. Um, and obviously lots of sources are coming out saying that it's likely that Kimmich and Goretzka are going to be leaving Bayern in 2024 and United have an interest in Kimmich. I like Kimmich. Um, maybe it'll happen in the summer because I know we're looking at sort of DM 6 or 8 hybrids, but I think we'll be looking at someone a little bit younger and a little bit more athletic maybe. But Kimmich is a good player, but um, I, I can't see it happening personally. But the Sun also said that United are in for Kimmich, but they said it's unlikely that he will leave in January. Um, maybe this is one to keep an eye on for the summer, but as I said, I don't see anything happening in January. I've just realised this lighting makes me look so much more pale than I am. I promise I'm nowhere near as pale as I look in this video. In terms of other deals that could happen in January, we know that United are looking at striker and centre-back deals, and Tolibo does remain a name of interest, but do we have the funds for it is the big question mark. We know that Donia Marlin, and Giresi and Werner are all players of interest. We have looked at Fafana of Monaco, but he's likely to be a summer target as he is a midfielder and United sort of prioritising striker, potentially right wing if they can get money for Sancho and centre-back. But it was said by Romano that Tenog has his eye on a number of, sort of players that he's interested in. We would like a centre-back, we would like a striker, but it could depend largely on sales. Now, talking of the takeover, how are they going to affect the January transfer window? Well, it was said that Ineos and the Glazer family, first of all, in the first story, have agreed to avoid criticising each other in public as part of the deal. Um, which for me says that the Glazers are probably going to throw them under the bus and uh, made, made made a deal so we can't criticise them or, or say that and then they can blame everything on Jim. I, that's what I think. I don't trust the Glazers. Uh, but, you, you know, I guess they're working together. It wouldn't be good if they were criticising each other anyway is the first story. But in terms of transfers and all of that, second story that came out yesterday by the Times basically said um, in a document for the authorities, uh, it's been learned that the club cannot appoint, dismiss, accept the resignation of a director of football manager during the ratification, ratification process without, the consult, without consulting INEOS. And it also states that um, um, uh, they must consult INEOS if they initiate or continue discussions or negotiate relating to a purchase sale or any other player. So new contract purchase sale as well. So essentially, INEOS now say if we sat Tenog, if we sat John Mert, if we sat if we sell a player, if we buy a player, um, they can't actually do it without consulting Ineos first, which I think is good because hopefully Ineos have a bit more brains than to sell Fernandez for six million. We'll probably sell him for four million, you know, what United are like as well. Now, let's talk about the latest on the injury front. What is the latest bit of information coming out? It was first said that Mount and Ahmed are back in training and they could be back in the squad within the next game or two. We've only got one Premier League game in January, which is Tottenham. Um, we've got the FA Cup game as well. So we've got a big rest period, which I think will allow us to get the bulk of our squad back for the next games. Maguire is also expected back in the next two weeks. And Martinez and Casemiro um, should be back mid-end, mid slash end of January um, after their long-term injuries. Uh, but we've got. I would rather not risk them and just bring them back slowly so we know that when they're back, they're ready to come back. And then it was also said that Lindelof is having surgery, but expect maybe end of January, February. Malassi return date unknown because it keeps getting set back because the surgeries are just going wrong. And then Amrabat and Shaw out the last game. Let's hope it was a knock. Let's hope it's an illness. Um, but we don't have any updates if they're going to be out for a while or not. So that is all the latest Manchester United news, transfer news, takeover news, and all the news coming about today. Please do hit that like button if you have not already. And of course, subscribe down below if you're new. I hope you found this video kind of informing, just deep diving really into the transfer ahead of January and... Although this lighting, some filming in a different room makes me look really pale. I promise I'm not this pale. I promise I'm not a ghost. Thank you for watching. Bye.